All right, so I've had a few people ask me how to manage focusing your camera if you have multiple layers and you want to focus on different objects at different times. It can be really tedious to keyframe your focus distance all the time. So what I've done is I've created a null object that the camera focuses on. So no matter where this null object is, the camera will interactively focus on it. So as you can see, if it gets really close, put it over here. Uh, the camera's focusing on it, and if it gets really far away, the camera focuses on it there. Um, and really far away, out to here, you can see how the focus is changing. The method also allows you to have the null object parented to other objects, and it still retains its location in space. One of the problems is if you use it just normally, and you create just a really basic code, which is what I used to do, if you parent it to another object, its position changes inside here. So we'll go over both of those techniques really quickly, and the pros and cons of them both. But essentially, this method here allows the camera to, to track the focus of a moving object. So if I have this parented, currently I have this parented to this negative 2,000, so let's parent it to the 3,000, negative, uh, let's parent it to the 3,000. So each one of these numbers actually represents the object's z depth. So, and I'll put the focus to zero, because I want it to be at 3,000. Even if this object is animated here, so let's just put a couple keyframes in here, and we'll make the object come closer to the camera. And a little closer even still. What will actually happen is, this will be really fast, but you can see that the camera is interactively focusing. So let's just sort of step through that animation. Um, so as you, as this is getting closer, let's, assume, let's just take a look at this, go back to the start. As, it, as the object is getting closer, these guys are blurring out. And the, the other benefit of that is if the camera is also animated, so let's take the camera's position, and we'll pull the camera back as well, a little bit. The, the 3000 will still remain in focus. So let's just have a look at this. So 3000 is the one we're tracking. It stays in perfect sharp focus, even though the camera's animated, even though everything's moving around, and you can change this at any time and it's fully interactive. So this will save you tons and tons of time, especially if you've animated something and you've decided you want to change your camera move or speed it up or slow it down. And so let's get into how this is actually done. So we have the position here. Uh, let's just get rid of these keyframes. Allow this just all to be static for now. And I'll unparent this guy here. There we go. And put him back to zero, or put it back to zero. Okay, so what's actually happening is in the focus distance um, setting, I've actually enabled um, expressions. And if you take a look here, I have essentially I'm subtracting the camera position. I'm subtracting the camera position from the the null object's world position, the Z position. So I'm taking the Z position of this object and subtracting the camera from it so that I'm actually finding out the difference between those objects. Like what is the difference between one object and the other in position? So if you can see, because my my focus object here is set to zero, its position is zero, if I pull this camera around, you can see that this focus number here actually adjusts exactly the same. And likewise, if right now it's at 5227, if I pull around this guy, let's put him, or put this one way further into 986, so now it's at 6213. So you can see this number is relating to the positioning of those two objects. Now if I parent this to another object, normally what happens, like if you take a look at when you parent something, what you get in this number is actually the relationship between the Z position of this object and the Z position of this object. So if I parent it to this guy here, you can see the number actually changes because the difference between this object and this object is 1,986. If I were to put this to zero, my null object will actually be the same Z depth as this object. So let's unparent it, none, and now you can see it's at negative 1,000. But that relationship makes it difficult to work with because as soon as you parent it, this number changes. What I used to do, let's just create a duplicate camera here. One way I used to do this, I just avoided parenting. This is the easiest way to do it. So if you really do not like dealing with the the code, uh, one really, really, really simple way of doing this, is let's just pull this up. Okay, so we have position and the camera options here. And we have this guy here. So for this camera, let's just go into camera two. Camera two, okay. 
and in inside here's this null object so one thing I used to actually do which is just super simple is I would take the focus distance and I'm just going to delete the code that's actually there so let's just turn off the expression delete okay and I just I would take the alt click the focus distance and then what I would do is just subtract I would go and pick whip and grab the Z position of the null object and subtract it from the Z position of the camera. Now this does essentially the same thing. So when this object is moving around and this null object gets closer, the camera is actually refocusing on that object. If the camera moves back, it's again refocusing on that null object. The problem with this, as we just talked about, is if I parent this to let's say negative an object at negative 3000 that number changes so that becomes negative 324 and you can see that my focus distance has changed so I'm going to undo that it's changed by a full 2000 so let's redo it I'm just going to redo control shift z and it can work though because you know that this object here is at negative 3000 and you can just position the null object to be at negative 3000 if you want that to be in focus and essentially you will have the negative 3000 in focus so that's one way of doing it. That's the easiest way of doing it. The other method, which is a little more c complicated but creates better results, is this right here. So I'm just going to quickly go through what's happening here. For cam position, I've just pick whipped and grabbed the transform position of the camera. So what I've done here is I type in the variable of, let's just say, let's do this again. So we have cam position equals, and then I just pick whip up to find the camera right here. I'm just taking its position value. Okay, and then let's say the focus layer is, it's just a variable I made up, so we have focus layer is equals, and then you go down here, and I just grab the actual, this static layer, this null layer here for the focus. Okay, so it's just grabbing this right here. The main piece of the code here is this bit right here. This is what converts the focus layer, which is that null object, to a global attribute like a global value in its in its positional data. Uh, it pretty much tracks the anchor point and tells you what position it is in the world. These variables could be anything. This could be focus, um, focus null world. It could be whatever you want. It doesn't matter. That's just a variable name. And then then you just call it up again here. So this is essentially saying to take the focus layer and convert its value to world values. Wherever it is in space, take that number and turn it into a global value so it knows where it is in the world of After Effects, in the 3D world. And then what we want to do is we want to take a look and track its anchor point. Okay, So it's applying that value to its anchor point. So I'm essentially, when I'm taking focus world 2 minus cam position 2, I'm actually doing exactly what I did up here. So when you take a look here, this is the focus position 2 and the transform position 2. That 2, if you're not familiar, that's the that's the array that's calling up the which value you want to track because a position has three values. It has it has x, y, and z. X is zero, y is one, and z is two. If I wanted to track the x position, I would put zero and zero, and it would track the x position. But you see, that gives me a crazy number. So I'm tracking the y. So I'm grabbing the two and the two. So this method here gives you a much more interactive and intuitive me method of doing it. However, you do have both options. You can do this simple one up here or this a little more complicated. And I would say if you don't really understand the code, it doesn't matter. I don't fully get it either. Just copy it, paste it, and use it. And it will work over and over again. So I hope this helps anyone who's had questions about how to do this and makes it a little bit easier for you. And maybe, maybe it'll save you a bunch of time.